Thank you for the introduction and thank you Gamescom Asia. As mentioned, I'm Garang Chandra. I'm the director for Southeast Asia Research at Nico Partners. Nico Partners is a game market intelligence firm focusing on the Asian market. We have been in the business for 18 years and we now cover 11 markets in the region. Today, we will talk about the Southeast Asia games market with a focus on the Philippines. First, we have to know the total number of gamers in Greater Southeast Asia. By Greater Southeast Asia, we in Nico Partners mean Indonesia, Malaysia, the Philippines, Singapore, Vietnam, Thailand, and Chinese Taipei. Out of those seven markets that we cover, we found that 381.3 million people are gamers. Moreover, 66.4 million people in Southeast Asia are from the Philippines, which makes it 17% total of the greater Southeast Asia market that Nico Partners cover. This in itself makes the Philippines a very important market as one fifth of all gamers in greater Southeast Asia that we cover are from the Philippines. Furthermore, last year's revenue from PC and mobile games in Southeast Asia reached 5.1 billion US dollars. However, only 7% of the total revenue was from the Philippines, or about 355.2 million US dollars. This is disproportionately low, and it's possibly due to the lower disposable income that Philippines has on average compared to the other markets that we cover. This is one of the main challenges that the Philippines has if it wants to grow both as a big market in the region and if the game industry in the country wants to expand as well because they also need domestic spending for their own games. Now, let us move to the PC games market of the region as a whole. In 2019, 154.3 million people were PC gamers in the region, and we expect the number to rise by around 30 million to 186.8 million by 2023. In terms of the revenue, 2.19 billion US dollars were generated from Southeast Asia in 2019, and we expect the number to keep on rising and reach around 3.14 billion US dollars by 2023. Interestingly, 95% of PC gamers in the region claim that they are playing or competing in esports games. That is a high number that is also an opportunity for game companies or studios that want to invest or expand to Southeast Asia because focusing on esports games or having games with esports elements in it will increase the possibility of success in the market. And we will talk more about this in the gamer profile in the next few slides. And lastly, regarding the internet user penetration in the region, about 77% of the total population in the region is connected to internet. And we predict that it will reach almost 99% in the next few years due to the high investment in internet infrastructure across countries and markets in the region. Moving on to the market that is very much talk in the region, the mobile games market. In 2019, there are more than 227 million mobile gamers or around 80 million more than PC gamers in the region. And we expect the number to rise to 290 million by 2023. In terms of the revenue, it's not too different from PC games for now, but we expect the number to double into around 5 billion US dollars by 2023. Moreover, 90% of the gamers that we surveyed claim that they play mobile esports games or compete in mobile esports tournaments, which is also interesting because gamers in general think that it's lower quality compared to PC esports, but gamers still like it anyway. And lastly, Southeast Asia also has more than 500 million smartphone users, but only half of them are PC gamers. And with the number predicted to increase into around 680 million in the next four years, we see also a great opportunity to claim them into the mobile game sphere in the region. And now, time for some comparison. 
this is the top PC games in Greater Southeast Asia, as opposed to the Philippines. It's based on Nico Partners Online Gamer Survey in 2019. And as you can see, there are a lot of overlap in the screen. Uh, League of Legends is popular both in Southeast Asia and the Philippines, Dota 2, CSGO. So in general, esports themed games are popular in both areas. But we can see several differences as well. For example, the Philippines is very much inclined to follow the trend in the US compared to other countries in the region, mostly because of the historical connection and cultural connection. So games such as Fortnite or Warframe are also popular in the Philippines, even though it's not as popular in Southeast Asia. Similar trend can also be seen on mobile games. This is based from Sensor Tower's uh, half year 2020 data. And we can see that games that are popular in the US, such as Roblox, Call of Duty, and Clash of Clans, are also popular in the Philippines compared to the other markets in Southeast Asia. However, the Philippines also still follow the typical Southeast Asia favorite genres, such as um, esports MOBA, esports uh, shooting, and MMORPG. So games such as Mobile Legends, MU, and Ragnarok are still popular in the Philippines, similar to the Southeast Asian region. If you notice all the esports titles in the slides that we just saw for the top games in Southeast Asia, maybe this is one of the reasons. In Nikos 2019 Gamer Motivations report, we found that 60% of Greater Southeast Asia gamers are strongly drawn to esports because they are motivated by competition, completion, community, and challenge. And all of these characteristics can be found in esports games. And to some extent, also MMORPG games. A little bit deeper into mobile games, we can see that in 2019, the, all of the top 10 mobile games with the most downloads and highest revenue were free to play mobile games. Even 61% of Mobile Legends total revenue in 2019, which is around 307 million US dollars, was generated in Southeast Asia alone, with Malaysia and Indonesia as the lead drivers. For more information on mobile games and free-to-play mobile games, you can look at Nico Partners and Google's article in Level Up, A Guide to Succeed in Asia's $70 billion gaming market. And now let's move on to the other major trends in Southeast Asia. The first and foremost is the official acknowledgement of esports as a national sport in Southeast Asia, especially after SEA Games 2019 in Manila, the Philippines. So governments of Singapore, Indonesia, Malaysia, Philippines, Vietnam are all already supporting the development of esports and video game sectors in their respective countries, which is good. And we also see an increasing involvement in the creation of AAA games by local studios across the region. While we also still seeing games with Asian-based IP, especially from Japan and Korea, are still in the top list of the popular games across the region as well. And lastly, we also found that Southeast Asia has a high ratio of female gamers of around 40%, which is comparable to Japan and Korea. Uh, adding another focus on esports, Southeast Asia itself is the world's fastest growing for esports, as esports is also the leading growth driver for Southeast Asia's game industry, and esports titles itself account for 41% of all games revenue in the region. We saw a rising number of local and regional tournaments, which signal a groundswell of esports fandom and domestic investment across countries in the region. And although mainstays such as Blizzard, EA, Riot, PUBG Corporation, Tencent, and Greena all continue to dominate in the region, local developers and publishers still continue to grow and take a more prominent role in esports. As you can see here, uh, we've seen a 244% increase in the total value of esports price pool for mobile esports uh, between 2018 and 2019. We see the high number of followers on social media for esports teams, and we see the increasing popularity of independent leagues, such as the independent female esports leagues in Southeast Asia. That's all about Southeast Asia. What about the Philippines? Well. I'm glad you asked, uh, because in early September this year, PESO, which is the Philippines Electronic Sports Organization, was acknowledged as a national sports authority by the Philippine Olympic Committee. This is a fresh news for us. And last year, SEA Games 2019, which was held in Manila, had esports as a medal event. And POC itself is still currently aligning with the Asian Electronic Sports Federation to also include esports in the next SEA Games, which will be held in Vietnam. 
esports is also uh, going into the education sector because starting this year, LPU, the Lyceum of the Philippines University, will offer a bachelor's degree in esports. And several cooperation between traditional sports and esports are also seen this year, such as uh, between the Philippines National Collegiate Athletic Association and the Philippine Collegiate Champions League, which are both traditional sports associations. Now they have esports events. The COVID-19 pandemic is also affecting game and esports across the region. Uh, traditional sports shifted to esports, as I mentioned before in the example in the Philippines, due to the impossibility to hold normal traditional games. And during the World 2020, the biggest esports events in the region is sadly canceled. But we also see more time spent for gaming and game-related streaming during the pandemic across the region as well. With Free Fire saw so more than 100 million daily active users in 2020, the second quarter. Um, a lot of increase in mobile gaming and game streaming viewership, live stream followers. So across the region, we saw high increase in the gaming and esports sector due to the pandemic. Right, that should be enough for the region. Now let's move to focus on the Philippines. These numbers are based on Nikos 2020 estimation pre-COVID, so we might see some changes in the near future. But this is what we have right now. So for the numbers of PC gamers, we see more people in the Philippines playing PCs compared to mobile games, mostly because of the popularity of PC games, cafes across the country. However, due to the pandemic, we might see the number inverted really soon. And in terms of revenue, mobile games revenue are higher than PC games revenue with 251.9 million mobile games revenue in the Philippines in 2020 compared to 166.9 million. All of the numbers are estimation because the year is not ended, obviously. Well, in general, the prohibitive cost of PC gaming in the Philippines has accelerated mobile gaming in the country. PC gaming equipment are more expensive compared to mobile games, which just need one smartphone compared to a PC. And that's why mobile game market growth in the Philippines has surpassed the PC game market growth. However, in general, the sales of new games are projected to grow uh, up to 23% this year, according to the Department of Trade and Industry of the Philippines. As for the top genres for gaming, both for mobile and PC, uh, are mostly the same, which are MOBA, uh, Battle Royale, RPG, Strategy, and Advanced Casual Games, especially sports and rhythm games. And as I, as I mentioned before, esports is very popular in the Philippines, and local developer scene is small, but it's growing with several success stories. And to further clarify why PC gaming uh, revenue is not as high as mobile games in the Philippines, this is from Nico's latest survey in 2020, and we found that around half of all PC gamers in the Philippines only spend between two to 10 US dollars for uh, PC games monthly, compared to other regions and other countries within Southeast Asia as well. This is considered quite low. Now let's move on to the regulatory overview of the Philippines for the gaming industry. So House Bill 894 and House Bill 7110 passed in 2018, uh, both were to combat the use of minors in illicit activities. So this law implement a nationwide curfew for minors under the age of 18, which reduce uh, the spending and the time spent for uh, PC gaming in iCafes, in internet cafes across the country. Furthermore, according to resolution number 2017-21, guidelines governing the conduct of esports in the Philippines this uh, resolution requires all athletes, domestic and foreign, to apply for a gaming license through the GAB in order to compete in the Philippines. It also set a taxation level of 3% of all tickets and media revenue to be remitted to the GAB, while organizers must also purchase a license at around 16 US dollars a day in order to host an event in the country. Again, this is also a, a little bit harming to the esports industry because then they have to pay quite a lot compared to uh, neighboring countries. We also see the Department of Education Order 86 series of 2010, which bans students in public and private elementary and secondary schools from going to internet cafes, malls, and theaters during class hours. We understand that this is very good at heart, but you know. And for some other positive uh, regulation, 
the Creative Economy Roadmap, which was uh, developed by the Department of Trade and Industry, it was trying to provide stronger patent and IP protection for game developers in the Philippines, as the Philippines claim that they are looking to become a leading developer in the region by 2030. As for important regulatory bodies in the country uh, that are involved in the game and esports sector, we have the Department of Trade and Industry, we have the TESDA or Technical Education and Skills Development Authority, which manage and supervise uh, the Philippines Technical Education and Skills Development, including in game development. We have the GAB, the Games Amusement Board. We have the Information and Communications Technology Office. We have um, the Philippines Esports Organization, PESO, and two other uh, esports associations in the country. What about the trends in the Philippines? Well, these are some of the major trends. So two out of top five trending Google searches in 2019 in the country were about online gaming. And a report by The Economy showed that the Philippines has the smallest internet economy in Asia, but it showed the highest capacity for growth. Filipinos also spend more screen time on average than anyone else in the world. Filipinos are not adverse to spending time on gaming, social media, and other online stuff. And Filipinos also has the second highest PC gaming time in the region in internet cafes, according to Nico's 2019 survey. However, uh, taxation and licensing issues for event organizers and foreign athletes have proven to be a hindrance to the development of esports. And the telecommunications industry in the country is also dominated by two major players, which both are often criticized for the slow internet speed in the country. And I, I also mentioned a way back about Philippines local developer scene. There is a small community of game developers in the Philippines, smaller than uh, neighboring countries. For example, the Game Developers Association of the Philippines has 26 core members and six partners. And one of its members was involved in the development of three AAA games, The Last of Us Part II. Another uh, chapter in the Philippines uh, for the local developers is the International Game Developers Association Manila chapter, which has nine studios in its board of directors. And for local talents, uh, nine universities and colleges in the country now offer game development degree programs. And foreign game companies that are operating in the Philippines right now include Ubisoft, uh, Gameloft, and Duina. So to sum up, uh, the Philippines has a strong growth in games market, especially for mobile games. And culturally, Filipinos are more open than their neighbors in spending time with gadgets and games, which is a strength for them. Esports is getting more popular in the country and more mainstream. Uh, there are regulations that could deter foreign investments on gaming, but overall the trend is positive. And the main inhibitors for growth are the slow internet and weaker telecoms infrastructure. So if you're interested to hear more about the Philippines or other countries in the region from Nico Partners, we will publish our Asia 10 report soon. And there's an option to get the country level reports on the one of the 10 markets in Asia. We already published a spotlight report on the Philippines for free on our website. We also have our esports tracker that tracks esports activities across the region. And we also publish uh, yearly China reports for PC, mobile gamers, and hardware. And for more information about Nico Partners, we have been in the industry since 2001. We have a global team in Silicon Valley, Shanghai, Jakarta, Bangkok, and London. And we have clients from multiple facets of the game industry. And we also provide several um, research and methods to find information. And that's all for me. Thank you. You can contact me at darang at nicopartners.com. And you can follow our Twitter at Nico China. And we also provide Nico news for free. And you can also check our blogs and data reports. Thank you.